What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, my name is Mac. I post videos on Sundays and today I needed a break. You needed a break. We all needed a break. I got a lot going on right now and so do you. I'm an empath. Today I thought we would sit down with a cup of tea just answer some of your hard-hitting questions. Um, Pride Month, so a lot of queer people are feeling a lot of different things. Some good, some bad. Some of them are having a really hard time. Hopefully this can give you a little bit of peace and maybe help you feel a little bit better if you're having a hard time this month. I'm gonna go turn off my dryer in case you guys can hear that because I am a good content creator. Per usual, I gathered all of these questions from my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, you can follow me at Matt Kinjami. Anytime I'm answering questions on my YouTube channel or frankly on any platform, I probably got the questions from Instagram. So how did you figure out how you wanted to present? Did people pleasing ever make it harder? Um, for sure. I think people pleasing is definitely part of it. I think even more than people pleasing is just the societal standards that we have for gender. Inherently just society assuming that your current gender aligns with your assigned sex at birth. And then also assigning things to that specific gender that essentially let society dictate your value based on how you fit those roles that are given to each gender. I think there is a lot to unpack there for a lot of people, um, no matter how you wanna present. I know that a lot of femme presenting queer people even struggle with things regarding to that, even though if they identify as a woman, being feminine is traditionally the thing that society would want you to do as a woman. But then they deal with things like, can people tell that I'm gay? Am I gay enough? Which you are, but I'm saying even if you're not mask, you know, that's something that you could possibly struggle if with. If you were raised in a house where heteronormativity was really pushed onto you, as it is in most households, then you know, you have these compulsions to do the things that heteronormative people would do and fit the mold that heteronormative people typically do. Not that they have to, but typically. And so there was like a ton to unpack there and it is super overwhelming for everybody on their own individual journey. First things first, I think something that's really helpful to point out is just that like, you might not know everything about yourself right off the bat. As a matter of fact, you guaranteed won't know everything about yourself right off the bat. I feel like I have a pretty solid gender expression that fits who I am, feels good to me, but I still don't know everything about myself. I'm learning more and more. So how do you learn? How do you find find out what feels best for you, what works for you. I actually have an entire video up about this. It's called Finding Your Gender Expression. It's not too far down on my page, but that basically just kind of explains my journey of like how I discovered this about myself. But to sum it up really quick for this video, I would just say you have to honor your curiosity. It's like my number one tip. I feel like I say it all the time. Honor your curiosity, let yourself try things. It's a lot easier said than done for a lot of people, especially given what your environment you is. Know, if something's interesting to you, if something catches your eye, uh, there might be there might be something there. What are your thoughts on being bi and religious? I don't know if you mean like bi space religious, like two separate things, or being a bisexual that is religious, a conundrum. Well, if you're bi, that's great. Congratulations, you are superior to all of us. Bisexual people just have a riz that is unmatched. And if you're religious, take notes from the bisexuals. I'm just kidding. Very common misconception that queer people can't be religious. I think it's very based though. Not because I personally believe that queer people can't be religious, but I believe that for many queer people, there is a lot of religious trauma there. If you are able to work through that religious trauma and turn your religion into something that is positive for you, that helps your life, that makes you feel spiritually fulfilled, that is incredible. Good for you, that's awesome. But for a lot of other people, myself included, it can be overwhelming and a little bit too difficult to sort through all of the trauma that is associated with that and essentially being raised in a religion where you existing is a sin um, and that being kind of reinforced your entire life, it can be something that you wanna push away from. That is also valid. I think for queer people in religion, I'm really excited for them that they have something that's important to them. But one of the best things that I've noticed about queer people in religion is that they acknowledge the trauma that other queer people might have from religion. My friends that aren't queer or aren't in the LGBTQ plus community, and they are also religious. The reason that that's not like triggering for me and it doesn't like put me off is because they are incredibly self-aware about the fact that religion has harmed a lot of people. And I think if you can accept that as a truth while also accepting the truth that religion is good for you and has helped you and doesn't lead you down a path of judgment and hatred towards other people, that's what religion should be about is kindness and love. Um, sorry to go on a little rant, but people that hold on to their religion but are self-aware of, the, of the things that it has done to maybe harm other people, I feel like those are people on the right track. How would you suggest keeping a long distance relationship alive and thriving? Well, I think there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, I think having a little bit of routine with your partner is really good. At least that's good for me. It helps me. Having consistent date nights, whatever those might be. Typically a lot of people will just do movie nights, stuff like that, maybe grabbing dinner. At least that's what me and my partner do. Lately we've been mixing it up and going on rock climbing dates, which is super fun. I think my number one tip to keep long distance relationships alive and thriving 
is to flirt with your partner. That is my best advice to you. Flirt. Flirt like your life depends on it. Flirt like if you don't pull them and then pull them again the next day and then pull them again the next day, they're gone. Keep the spark alive, I'd say, because me and my partner went through a phase where I was like very deeply in love with her, but we started kind of just feeling like friends because obviously you lose that physical connection. A lot of it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And she honestly just started kind of feeling like my best friend for a little bit, which she is my best friend. But there came a point in time where we had a conversation. I was like, hey, I miss us being romantic with each other and like flirting with each other. And we kind of examined that and now she can't stop sexing me. What's your favorite thing about the Chosen Family Podcast? Love this question. If you guys don't know what the Chosen Family Podcast is, it is my podcast with Elena Joy, Ashley Gavin, and myself. We take on a little bit of a family dynamic and answer your questions and kind of just banter. And we are the queer family that you never but had. But I would probably say that my favorite thing about the podcast is... I don't think people realize that I'm learning just as much as they are. In the eyes of the viewer, I'm one of the hosts. So it's like, I'm one of the entertainers. But I'm constantly being entertained. I constantly have access to two of the most incredible people, most incredible creators, artists that I know. Um, and I've been able to have a very personal relationship with them because of this. How do you balance wanting to be open and transparent while also keeping your private life private on social media? Honestly, for this one, I am like learning how to balance it every day because every day is a new challenge of how to do that. Like, should I respond to this person that commented this thing about my relationship? Um, is it okay if I mention that me and my girlfriend did this? Is it okay to say that we're together right now? I'm really lucky now that most of my platforms, my audience is very respectful here on YouTube. You guys are great. You guys are very respectful and I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. You guys recognize that I have autonomy about what I wanna post about me and my relationship. And you're not really pressing for more. Of course, there's like people every now and then and I understand um, it's exciting to see queer people thriving and happy and in love. I was the same way when I was younger. I love to see that kind of representation. So I totally understand. But I have I have a pretty respectful audience. I really appreciate it. But I think when in doubt, I just don't post about it. For me and my girlfriend, it kind of started as something that was necessary for our relationship. And now it's still pretty necessary, but I've also grown to love the element of privacy. A lot of the time, being online can feel very overwhelming. It can feel like too much. It can feel like I have no control over anything. So in times like that, knowing that my relationship is private, my relationship is mine. It's not, I don't have to worry about the influence of the internet on us. I don't have to worry about people like placing judgments over a video we posted together. Like I swear to God, you'll see a couple posts a video and the comments are like, did you see how her left pinky twitched away from her partner? She must be cheating on her. Like crazy shit like so that. So to just save ourselves from all of that trouble and everything to do with that is uh, a blessing and it's really nice. It makes us feel so authentic to me. Nothing's fake, nothing has to be played up or played down for the viewer to interpret because we don't have to worry about that because we don't post it. It feels very protected and I really, really like it. Hi, that. any advice on dealing with gender dysphoria when living in a space that's not accepting? I can imagine that during Pride Month, a lot of people would be feeling a lot of things about gender expression, about the way they're expressing. Seeing people out there celebrating is probably difficult when you are not able to be out there celebrating because your family's homophobic or you're in a place where it's not safe. My heart is with you. I'm sorry. I am really hoping that it gets better for you. This is really difficult because my advice for gender dysphoria, like I said earlier, is to like play with things and experiment and let yourself try stuff that you're interested in. But if you're in a space where you can't do that, this is like a really shitty situation. There's really not a way to sugarcoat it. My best advice to this person would be hold on to the hope that someday you can present how you would like to. If you have better advice for this person, please comment it down below. That could include things like watching shows where one of the characters really presents how you'd like to present. And so like you're almost taking inspo from that. You think it's really cool. Hold on to stuff like that. Saving pictures of people that you're like, I love that outfit. I love the way they look in this, blah, blah, blah. Know that it is someday possible. Find online spaces where you feel safe where you feel like you can see a future that you would maybe want. Hope is a really strong thing. It's a really powerful thing. Just remember that right now isn't forever. I know that a lot of people's situations are difficult. And just because you can't physically pursue the way that you'd like to look in this moment, and I'm so sorry you can't, doesn't mean that you can't almost kind of have that fantasy land in your head. I don't know if what I'm saying is even healthy, but I know that's what I used to do when I was a kid and I didn't feel like I could present the way that I wanted to. And it was exciting for me. It was hopeful for me. I hope that can help you a little bit. Do you have any red flags? Honestly, my red flags are probably like that I'm a TikToker, that I'm a content creator. <laughs> One time I saw a comment on my TikTok. It was this person, they had, they- I saw them actually frequently leaving kind of hateful comments. I ended up blocking them, but- They'd commented several times on different videos and said, 
I know she cheats. Like, this girl's a cheater. It's like someone asked about me and my ex. Did you, did you cheat on your ex-girlfriend or did she cheat on you? Nobody cheated. We just, we had a mutual split. Nobody cheated. Um, but of course, when you look at me, it's very clear that I look like a cheater, whatever that looks what like. What was the hardest thing about coming out? The hardest thing for me about coming out was probably the fact that it's not like a one-time experience. Like it's not like a one and done. If you're a queer person, unfortunately in the world that we live in, you are constantly coming out. You will be coming out for the rest of your life. Anytime I go out to eat with my girlfriend, I'm essentially coming out to, you know, whoever we talk to. I would say just like the repetitiveness of it. it but you know, you get more comfortable with it, so it it gets a lot easier. Would you date a stripper? If my girlfriend started stripping, she'd still be my girlfriend. Does that count? If your partner wasn't in LA, would you still have decided to shift to LA? If too personal, don't have to answer. Thank you for respecting my boundaries. It's not too personal. No, <laughs> definitely not. I think it's fun to visit. It's a cool place. Geographically beautiful. Like the differences, it's LA is just too much for me. But you know, I'm happy to be there with her. It's gonna be really nice to close the distance. It's just stressful and new and probably wouldn't do it if my girlfriend didn't live there. But it's still my decision and I made that choice. There's a lot of questions that I'm getting about like, do I regret dropping out of college and am I planning to go back? Not even for a little bit do I regret dropping out of college. I think it was probably one of the best decisions at that time that I could have made. That was a time when I really needed to focus on my career and it really paid off for me. Uh, I was able to do some really wonderful things. I'm still able to do some really wonderful things. I think a lot of people forget that like, you can go to college anytime. Like if you have something pressing that is a great opportunity or that you want to do and you can only do it right then, but you're like, oh, I'm in school. Push off school, seriously. I like, I will never tell somebody what to do as far as like you should go or you shouldn't go to college, but you can go to school anytime. If a once in a lifetime opportunity comes up and it doesn't harm your education in a massive way for you to push that off, I understand it could be different maybe for people in med school or something if you're doing that. Do the once in a lifetime thing because I will never look back and regret that I dropped out of school because I can go back whenever I want and finish my degree. If I had stayed in school and not made those career progressions, I can never get that so back. So no, I don't regret it at all. As far as going back, I'm not totally sure. I think if I went back, I don't think it would be for film. Okay guys, I think that is the majority of questions that I'm gonna get to today. If you like this kind of content, make sure that you comment down below. Again, follow me on Instagram if you want your question included in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, thanks for hanging out, this was fun. I hope you got a little nugget of advice here and there and feel free to comment your own nuggets of advice down below. Is it making you uncomfortable that I keep saying nugget? Comment that as well. Um, I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching.